glory to And worthy to be praised, the Lamb upon the throne. Give it a Lamb upon the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. How is everyone doing? The Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am very, very certain that you will be tremendously blessed tonight. By the way, I uh, welcome you to the new week. Hallelujah. It's going to be a covenant week of testimonies in the name of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. My heart is so heavy this um past couple of days hallelujah glory to god but i have a word of encouragement for as many as i in pain emotionally due to loss to as many that as are grieving for the loss of any loved one. Hallelujah. We have the comfort of the words of our Lord Jesus. He says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Glory to God. This is Jesus himself. He knew that at some point, we, you're going to need comfort. Glory to God. He said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we have a comforter in the person of the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. Glory to God. Even prophet Isaiah captured it when he says in Isaiah chapter 66, verse number 13, he says, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. And ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. I want you to put your name there. If you're going through any pain, if you need comfort in any dimension, say, ye, I shall be comforted in Jerusalem. It says, ye shall be comforted. Glory to God. You see, grieving is hard. It's difficult. Glory to God. But I pray for someone this evening. Whatever loss you're facing, whatever pain, whatever grief, be comforted. Receive the comfort of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. It might just be a giant that you need to conquer. Glory to God. And so I want to talk about a special man in the scripture this evening. Glory to God. But I want to prophetically declare unto you the word of God from Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 10. The word says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is safe. Glory to God. And we are the righteousness of God. It's not by what we did. It's not by our merit. It's not by any work that we've done. It is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God. The impugned righteousness. Glory to God. 
you, we are the righteousness of God. I says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is safe. Safety is of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so this evening, I want to talk about giants. Giants. The account, if you want to study that scripture, is from 1 Samuel chapter 17. Hallelujah. I narrowed it down from verses 33 to, I think, 51. Hallelujah. It was talking about a giant. And so when a giant is mentioned, what comes to your mind? Giants are humongous. Giants are legendary beings, often depicted as enormous creatures with immense strength, enormous strength. You hear by, about giants and how they appear in myths, in folklore, in, and literatures across various cultures, sometimes as benevolent figures and other times as antagonistic or some kind of fearsome beings. Glory to God. But in the context of deliverance and spiritual warfare, giants can refer to powerful spiritual forces or entities that oppose the work of God, that antagonize God, or that seek to hinder individuals in their journey with God, in their spiritual work with God, in their spiritual growth. Glory to God. And so these giants will begin to manifest as obstacles, as strongholds or demonic influences that we must overcome. Glory to God. Hallelujah that we must overcome. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just pay attention tonight. You'll be tremendously blessed. And so these giants manifest as obstacles, strongholds, or demonic influences that we as believers must overcome through prayer through faith, through spiritual authority that we have, the full armor of God. Hallelujah. And so giants can represent various forms of spiritual bondage. It could be an addiction. When you are addiction, the spirit of addiction, it could be fear, it could be oppression, it could be grief. Glory to God. It could be confronting uh, 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 these giants might require spiritual discernment, perseverance, and reliance on the power of God. Glory to God. And so we're going to go, we're going to use David as a case study. One well-known example of a giant is depicted in the, in the scripture is Goliath. Goliath a Philistine warrior from the Old Testament. And so Bible described Goliath as a formidable opponent, towering over others at around nine feet tall. He was huge. And what this man did was he challenged the Israelites to send out a champion to fight him. But everybody was afraid. None dared to face him until the young shepherd boy, David, stepped forward. There's an anointing in this shepherd boy, David, that I like to call David anointing. And we as believers, even in this dispensation, should yearn, should work in Davidic anointing to conquer the Goliaths of our destinies, to conquer the Goliaths of our lives. Glory to God. The Bible says, with faith in God and with a sling, 
David defeated Goliath, demonstrating that even the most imposing giants can be overcome with faith and courage. I want you to tell yourself faith over fear. Glory to God. That man was bold. Scripture says that the righteous is as bold as the lion. And so every Christian, every believer has one giant or the other facing him or her. The giants must be conform, confronted, challenged, and conquered before you can make progress. That obstacle, that stronghold, that strong man power must be defeated because they come as strong men. All right, I'll talk about strong man powers, powers that will sit on your glory, powers that will not move forward. Glory to God. They are Goliaths of destinies. I won't talk so much about the strong man powers. Glory to God. And so let's dive into scripture. First Samuel. For the sake of time, I probably would not read the entire scripture. Take your time. Do well to dive into the word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 17. You can read from verse 33 to 51. Glory to God. So you get a clear picture of the dramatic yet powerful incidents that happened between this uncircumcised Philistine and David. Glory to God. I will read verse 50 and 51. It says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Verse 51 says, Therefore David ran. Galo shata barugade. Speed, acceleration, strength came upon him. When the anointing is upon a man, it comes with speed. It comes with action. The Bible says, and David, therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword. And threw it out of the out of the sheet thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Glory to God. They fled. They left. They left. Glory to God. They fled. They got scared. They know that this is no longer a joke. Glory to God. You see, there will always be challenges of life. Challenges are what makes life interesting. And overcoming them is what makes life even more meaningful. Scripture says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver him from all of them. Not some. Glory to God. I will say it again. Challenges are part of life. Challenges will make your life interesting. But when you overcome them, it makes it worthwhile. It makes it even more meaningful. Glory to God. Now, giants are problems. Pressures, pains, persecutions. We will have to face these from time to time in our lives. Let us not be deceived. There's economic pressure. There is economic hardship. Recession. Glory to God. And so what giants do Giants oftentimes cause major difficulties in our lives. 
and brings with it the possibility of life-threatening situations. The people of God were taunted by this Philistine giant for a long time and nobody dared to confront him because he was an experienced military guy. Hallelujah. So I would just give us a glimpse of what a giant is. So we have a spiritual perspective that a giant is anything that distracts us from our, our focus on God. Anything that deters us from our service for God. Anything that drains us out of our driving passion for God is considered a giant. Giant would prevent you from fulfilling your God-given purpose until they are eliminated totally. Giants represent anything which is opposed to God. So I don't know what giants are facing today. Is it a giant of resentment? Is it a giant of fear? A giant of loneliness, depression? A giant of guilt and shame? Scripture says there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Guilt and shame, reproach can be a giant. Worry. You have a giant of discouragement. There is a giant of jealousy and envy. Glory to God. You don't have to envy anybody. You don't have to be jealous of anybody. Scripture says that all things are yours. Depression can be a giant. Hopelessness, bitterness, pride, selfishness, and doubt. These are all giants. We can say that these things and many other things like this oppose God. Giants are therefore giants that are there for us to be slain and removed. They must be slain and removed. I want to challenge this evening. How do you see your giant? Do you see your giant as a problem? Or do you see it as a possibility? We see that in the life of David. When we use David and his encounter with this uncircumcised Philistine called Goliath. And as David, we must not only confront whatever represents Goliath in our lives, but we must conquer them. And the question now is, how do you confront the Goliath? How do you confront Goliath? You know there is a Goliath that needs to be confronted, that you need to challenge. Glory to God. At this point, it's not disputable that we must courageously confront our giants. David saw a giant. But he confronted him with great courage. First of all, you need courage. You need boldness. Glory to God. You will notice that David, what David saw as he looked and confronted Goliath. Glory to God. Let us notice, take cognizance what David saw as he looked and confronted this gigantic human being. His appearance. Goliath was a gigantic man. His appearance was beyond comprehension. There is his, his appearance. There is his armor. Bible says that he was decked out in brass armor. Goliath wanted to appear stronger and unbeatable intimidating. He accomplished this task because Israel, the people of God, was afraid of him. And then 
his allegiance. If you go to 43, verse 43, the Bible says that Goliath cursed David in the name of his gods, the gods of Moji. Goliath had allegiance to his gods, the God of the Philistines, which is not the God of heaven. And the Bible says that David used the phrase uncircumcised Philistine to expose the fact that Goliath did not belong to the covenant people of God. Glory to God. Circumcision to the people of God was one of the constant reminders of the fact that God made a covenant with Israel. So Goliath being called an uncircumcised Philistine meant that he opposed all that God stood for. Hallelujah. He seemed unstoppable and presented himself as someone who cannot go down, who would never go down. And then he began to ask, what kind of giant is this? And what kind of giant are you facing today? What seems to be stopping you dead in your tracks, in your path of destiny? Does your giant seem unstoppable? Do you feel as though there is no way that you can defeat something that you are facing at this moment? Bible says David had to confront his giant in his mind and in his heart before he ever tried to attack him. It all start, begins with the mind. How are you looking at that problem? How are you looking at that, that challenge? When you look at that challenge or that problem as gigantic, as a giant, you're already defeated. But as David, he confronted, we must confront the giant in our mind and in our heart. And then before we go and face him squarely, Goliath was a representative of the Philistines. He was aggressive. He was persistent. He was combatant. Bible says every day, twice a day, for 40 good days, Goliath stood in territory that belonged to Israel and demanded that someone fight him, demanded that someone engage him. And the size of Goliath, the sound of Goliath, the strength of Goliath was frightening, was scary. And so what this means is that the people of God were actually in the bondage of fear because of some giant that stood against them and their God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What is the devil? What is Satan? What is Satan using as a giant to stop you from becoming who God wants you to be? From becoming the Christian you ought to be? Do you have resentment in your heart towards someone that did you wrong by adventure or something that has happened in the past? Are you running from something that God has called you to do per adventure and assignment? Is your family facing financial difficulties or marital issues? Are you having trouble with guilt or shame about the poor choices you made in the past? About poor decisions you took in the past? Has something taken place in the past that so disappointed you that you just can't seem to get over? Or are you finding it difficult to have a consistent 
and committed Christian life. What you are going to have to do is to courageously confront your giant and realize that you cannot go on in your journey, in your Christian life, until that giant is dealt with. You should also recognize that it can be defeated and removed by the help of the Lord. We must challenge that Goliath of our destiny. You must engage that Goliath of your destiny. You do not have to be defeated by your giant. Your giant must not be your real problem. Your real pro problem may be your evaluation of your giant. Hear me and hear me good. Your giant may not be your real, real problem. Your actual problem may be your evaluation, how you look at the giant. The giant that you're facing may just be God's means of getting you to ask him for the blessing he has been waiting to give you all along. For some of you cannot even pray until you begin to have problems or be begin to have attacks. That's when you remember warfare prayers. That's when you remember to fast and read your word as you're having problems. Sometimes these are giants can be a wake-up call. And so what am I saying? Your giant should not be a problem. It should be an opportunity for God to perform a miracle in your life. What so many Christians who are discouraged have done is that they have dropped their shield of faith and have failed to trust totally in the Lord. Read if Paul talk, talk, talk to us about the full armor of God, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and the breastplate of righteousness. You have the full armor of God. Hallelujah. Back to our father, David. David demonstrated two ways to challenge the giant. I have said it over and over on this platform, that one way to get your miracles, to defeat the enemy when you're facing a situation is to recall your past miracles, to recall the past victories. Glory to God. David recalled the past victories that he had had. Remember why King Saul couldn't understand why David wanted to go out and face Goliath. David couldn't get over the fact of what God had done for him in the past. King Saul kept talking about how big Goliath was compared to them. David began to talk about how small Goliath was compared to his God. David kept a spiritual file in his mind and heart of the things God had done for him. Hallelujah. He recalled the past victories. He knew that he could confront and challenge Goliath based on the fact of what God had done for him in the past. Why David was faithfully tending his sheep all alone by himself. Facing and defeating the bear and the lion. God was preparing him to face Goliath. Glory to God. There are two things that you need to understand about what God is doing in your life. Number one, the little battles in your, the little tiny, tiny battles in your life are getting us ready for the big battles we are going to face. God is just getting you ready. Number two, 
private victories are preparing us for public victories. David could challenge Goliath because he knew that since God took care of him in the past, God could and would take care of him in the present. Glory to God. Renew your faith. That's another part. Renew your faith for present victories. Renew your faith. Your faith must not stagger. David's confidence was not in his own ability. He was no match for Goliath. David's confidence was not in his armor. Bible says that David refused to wear man's clothing. Glory to God. David understood that it was not by his might, nor by his power. It was by God's spirit. And so David's confidence rested in the God that brought him through the past. And gentlemen and ladies, this is where the battle was won. David knew that his God, the God of heaven, the God of Israel was bigger than Goliath. If you are facing a giant in your life, the only thing you can do is to put your faith in the God who can do all things. Don't look at your giant from an earthly human point of view. Look at it from heaven's point of view. From scriptural point of view, God is bigger than any giant that you will ever face. I'll say it again. God is bigger than any giant that you will ever face. Conquering your giant. I said that we must completely conquer our giants. We should know that there are only two proper mo motives for wanting to see your giants defeated. Two important motives why you want your giant defeated. Number one, a desire for God's glory. It is for his name's sake. This should be the ultimate motivator for all of our life to give God glory. Everything we do should be passed through the filter of God's glory. Glory to God. Number two reason, number two motive for wanting to see your giant defeated is as a desire for God's plan, for God's purpose to be fulfilled in your life. I want to refer you to Romans chapter 8, 28 or 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. It is part of God's plan for you to face your giant. It's all factored in the plan. We are not cowards in the kingdom. Glory to God. It is part of God's agenda for you to squarely face your giant and that that giant would not be there. It, is, it may be part of God's plan for you to defeat your giant. It may also be God's plan for you that you live with your giant. Are you willing to accept his plan regardless of what it is? If you want to see the giant in your life lying dead at your feet, then you got you to know some facts. You have to take have some takeaways that God is greater than your, your giants. That the God who walked then will walk now. You don't need new methods or new strategies to defeat your giants. There are tried and proven weapons like prayer, faith, 
the word of God will still get the job done today. I want you to read Ephesians chapter 6 from verses 11 to 18. They're about, about the full armor of God. Glory to God. Through prayer, we communicate with headquarters of heaven about your giant. Prayer is the believer's greatest secret weapon. Assault your giant with the word of God. Attack your giant in faith, knowing that God always gives the victory. Victory belongs to the Lord. Glory to God. It says, he will either give you the victory over what you face or he will give you victory in what you face. Sometimes giants are placed in our lives to grow us in the Lord. Giants are the original breakfasts of champions. You can't be a champion without facing or conquering or defeating your, your giant, whatever that represents Goliath. Now, before David conquered Goliath, he had to overcome some issues. He had to overcome some obstacles that were before him. In the face of your giant, you will be discouraged. You will hear the naysayers. First, David had to overcome the obstacle of cowardice. The whole army of Israel was afraid, were cowards. David had to overcome the obstacle of criticism. David's brothers criticized him for coming to their camp, remember? David had overcome the obstacles of concern. King Saul didn't think David had a chance at all. David has to overcome the obstacle of a champion. David was about to face the greatest challenge of his life. But guess what? David experienced the power of God. The anointing upon his life helped him. The Davidic anointing. Glory to God. You see, from an earthly standpoint, from human perspective, David looked outclassed. David was a nobody, inexperienced, outmanned. But from a standpoint of heaven, from a heavenly standpoint, Goliath was no match for David's God. And so David faced Goliath in the name of the Lord. He has no weapon. He refused the armors. He refused all the things that were given to him. He said, no. I have a secret weapon, the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Thank God for the name of Jesus that we have today. And so when you face your giant, take time to whisper the name of Jesus. It will give you comfort. It will give you calmness and courage. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and he's safe. David enjoyed the provision of the Lord. In verse 52 of this scripture, we see that David and the army of Israel and Enjoyed the fruits of their victory. David is an example 
that when one life is yielded to the Lord, it will make a huge difference in many lives. Glory to God. It takes one person. The same thing that happened to David can happen to you. You can face, you can fight, you can finish off your giant if you will just trust and depend upon the Lord. Don't just throw a stone at your Goliath and hit him in the forehead. Go over to your giant, take the sword and cut his head off and completely finish it. Don't give that giant that you are facing in your life an opportunity to live again in your life. Conquer your giant. Conquer him. He's not a match to the God of heaven. Glory to God. He's not a match. Hallelujah. Jesus came from the lineage of David. We have the Davidic anointing. And so as you face your giants and fight your giants and finish your giants, people will begin to ask, what makes you so different? It is the anointing. It is the power of God. The David anointing. It makes no difference what you're facing today. It makes no difference what the news is saying. It makes no difference what the doctor report says. It makes no difference what your giant may be. I assure you, you can defeat any giant that comes your way. Scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you know that? Greater, you carry God. You carry the lion of the tribe of Judah. You carry Jesus. Hallelujah. So when David defeated Goliath, other people were blessed. Others were blessed. Others are watching how you face your giants. You have obstacles. Though. You would have people that would discourage you. You would have people that, oh, you are the first person delving into that business. Do you know that in the first three months, it's always difficult? First of all, where are you getting the money to start? That assignment that God, you know, and you know that how God spoke to you about it. Someone will discourage you. Do you know what you're talking about? Nobody has ever done this before. How on earth do you think you can achieve this or accomplish this? They were not there when God talked to you about it. Why should their opinion matter? Those are giants of doubts. Those are giants of naysayers that you need to get rid of. Those are Goliaths of your destiny. Don't feed into them. When you allow God to give you victory over your giant, Others will be encouraged and blessed. You see those people that were like, oh, you can't achieve it. You can't do it. They will come back celebrating with you. I will leave you with the last word this evening. God is greater than your giants. God is greater than your giants. Your Goliath is coming down. You are more than a conqueror. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. 
we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for watching. I will see you pretty soon. But have yourself a fruitful, productive week of grace in the name of Jesus. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Transforming Ministries. God bless you. Bye-bye.